Um, yeah, my name is Arne Bröring from 52 North, uh, and um, yeah, we are doing uh, innovative open source uh, software development on yeah, uh, geo topics. And today I will uh, talk about a project uh, which we are uh, conducting together with ESRI, Atkins and Conterra uh, for the European Environment Agency, EEA. And within this project uh, we aim at um, better enabling the EEA to um, yeah, provide access to near real-time environmental data from the various data sources they are collecting. Um, and uh, we use, therefore, uh, the sensor observation service defined by OGC. And um, we have developed an extension which is aligned with the sensor observation service for um, the ArcGIS server. And um, so that is then integrated with the GU services REST API, the API um, of uh, ArcGIS server. So I will start by uh, giving a, a broad overview of the project. Later on, uh, Peter Kjeld um, will uh, yeah, basically continue and uh, maybe give uh, yeah, um, also a uh, perspective on this project from the EA perspective. And um, after this uh, yeah, brief overview, I will um, go into the details of uh, yeah, how this uh, extension of the GeoService REST API works. So first, what is the EA? Well, probably most of you know that. Um, it is a, a central European agency um, that uh, uh, yeah, is responsible for collecting environmental data from, right now, I think, uh, 32 member states. And um, besides this uh, yeah, responsibility, responsibility for collecting um, environmental data, they also um, disseminate, disseminate the data again and also um, disseminate uh, um, derived information products from that data, which is then consumed and used, for example, by scientists, but also by European decision makers and also the general public. Um, interesting for us was um, that the executive director, um, Jacqueline McLeod from the EEA, pointed out in her keynote as, at the S3 user conference in uh, 2011 that uh, in situ sensor data is very important for the EEA and especially um, the, the need for an, an easy access once was pointed out by her. So um, those in situ sensor data come uh, from various domains uh, in case of the EEA. Uh, they are dealing with um, four main data themes. There's air quality, biodiversity, climate change, and land use. And you can imagine that um, the data characteristics are very um, different for these uh, data themes. So, um, and that is also this variety of, of data sources is also the, the underlying problem of, of this project um, that we want to tackle. So, and this problem is uh, illustrated here. Um, the EA collects the data uh, from the data provider, so environmental organizations of the different member states, uh, collects it, the data, integrates it um, with the ArcGIS server-based infrastructure here, and then provides it um, to the data consumers. And um, the EA has to deal here with um, yeah, a huge uh, variety, as I said, and heterogene heterogeneous interfaces to the data sources. So um, yeah, various kind of, uh, kinds of formats are used and each time um, a new data source shall be integrated. Um, basically, um, yeah, uh, an adapter has to be uh, implemented uh, on site of the EEA and um, that is of course uh, yeah, somewhat cumbersome and uh, yeah, also expensive. Uh, and on the other hand also here uh, the data from the EA is offered right now still in application specific interfaces which uh, can be a problem for data consumers um, which would uh, prefer relying there on, uh, yeah, on standards. So um, the approach chosen by this project here is to um, yeah, base the infrastructure on uh, internationally adopted standards, namely the OGC sensor web enablement suite of 
standards and in particular the sensor observation service or shortened SOS uh, within that suite of standards. Um, and then the idea was to, uh, to take these standards and um, combine them with the existing GIS infrastructure in case of the EEA and many of the member state organizations that means um, yeah, that the, the existing infrastructure is based on ESRI's ArcGIS. So what we needed to do is extending that um, uh, and, and in particular the GeoServices REST API used by ArcGIS server. Um, so um, if we look again at this figure here, we would ha have then in the end um, the SOS interface here uh, on the one hand on uh, on side of the data providers so that the EEA um, yeah, can easily access the data from those member state uh, agencies and also the EEA offers the data then again um, using the SOS interface um, and the data consumers can, can uh, access the data through that. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, within this project we chose a, a threefold uh, development approach. Um, we first uh, designed a data model for these near real-time uh, observation data. This data model, of course, had to be very generic since we are dealing with these different kinds of, of data. Uh, therefore, we aligned it with the Observation Measurements 2.0 standard, which was developed in context of the OGC, but is now also an ISO standard. Second step was to um, develop uh, the SOS interface for the GeoServices REST API, so an extension for uh, ArcGIS server. And um, here we we offer basically the same functionality as the Sensor Observation Service 2.0 standard offers. However, we um, yeah, use this uh, yeah, REST flavored interface and offer the data from these uh, three main resources observations, so sensor data features and sensors not in uh, XML as it is done by the standard, um, but we use JSON, so a more lightweight uh, format. In a third step, however, we also wanted to have this full compliancy to the SOS 2.0 standard by this uh, ArcGIS server extension of the SOS. And therefore, um, yeah, we have also now uh, uh, incorporated support for um, the uh, main operations of the sensor observation service and um, the uh, yeah, return of uh, ONM 2.0 XML uh, and SOAP encoded uh, data. Okay, um, this is a, a brief architectural overview uh, of how to, to set up this SOS extension. You see here um, this um, big box is, uh, represents the ArcGIS server and um, that hosts uh, map services. Um, there can be multiple and this one here is based on uh, or sits on top of a geo database that complies to this data model here, which we have developed in our first step. And um, then we can register this newly developed SOS extension um, as an extension for the map service. And the data can be then ex accessed through the uh, GeoServices REST API and also these new um, SOS-like uh, functionalities can be used to query the data. Um, okay, before I uh, show you some more details to the SOS part uh, of the uh, GeoService REST API, which we have developed here, a quick uh, review of what the GeoService REST API looks, looks like. This is an, uh, yeah, an excerpt of the uh, online um, documentation of that API. And uh, what you see here is the layer uh, slash table resource um, which is offered by a map service. And um, all those resources here, um, they use this resource hierarchy figure to uh, show yeah, um, the structure of the, the API basically. And also we made use of that um, mechanism. And um, you can see here the SOS extension uh, sits right under the map service and offers three uh, types of resources, um, which I mentioned earlier, observations, procedures or sensors, and uh, features. 
and all these uh, resources here can be um, filtered when, when we query them using the query operation. And we see uh, later how that works. Um, yeah, to show you uh, uh, an example of uh, the, the SOS extension in action, so to say, um, I set up uh, a an, an deployment here uh, for 1,500 air quality stations which are uh, dispersed all around Europe and measuring, for example, uh, ozone and carbon monoxide. That data comes uh, from the EEA. And here in this example, um, we have data for 30 days included in the SOS or Arctia server, which means uh, there are around uh, one million observations. Uh, okay, let's have a look at the details. So this is um, basically the starting point of uh, the SOS. You can see here the typical uh, ArcGIS server um, URL, um, and then this is the name of the map service, and here starts um, the extension part, and which is called SOS extension. And um, by following this starting point here, um, we get basic information about um, the, uh, this SOS hosted by ArcGIS server. And um, just give me a second. Here it comes. Um, this reflects more or less also the, uh, the information content which you get uh, when you call the capabilities operation from the, the SOS, or so capabilities operation. I guess uh, many of you are familiar with that. Um, is a part of every OGC service so uh, of the SOS. So you get, for example, information like the, the title here of this SOS, uh, brief description, contact information, and then links to, to in this case, uh, resources, um, observations, procedures, and features. And the procedures are also listed here, and in this case of, a, uh, of this network of air quality stations, we have modeled the sensor networks itself as procedures. I can follow this link and I get information about those. Um, and these are all HTML representations of those informations. And um, uh, yeah, behind this HTML, we have actually JSON coming from the ArcGIS server and I can also query that. And um, this is the description of the procedure. And also that can be um, queried from the, uh, the normal SOS, or so the standard conform compliant SOS. However, then it's encoded in SensorML. And here we use a JSON encoding for that. But it's mainly uh, the, the same information content. Um, for example, here we have the outputs defined of that uh, sensor or procedure. Um, which points us to a, a description of carbon monoxide, and we have here the units of measure, for example. Okay, back to my presentation. Okay, now we want to uh, query actual uh, measured uh, observations from, uh, from that service, and therefore we extend this URL here by adding these two segments here, observations, so we want to access that resource and we add a query uh, so that we can filter the data. And we define here um, these three types of filters. So first we want data from the procedure or sensor called CO sensor network. We are querying data for three features of interest, which are in this case air quality stations. And I give here a certain temporal filter. And in this case, it's a timestamp we can also use um, a time period, for example. So if I follow this link here, I get to that query, which has an error code here, and I really know why There's this uh, temporal filter is not correctly copied. So I quickly um, oh, copy that in there. So the filter, boom. You see here, uh, ArcGIS server offers us a nice form to give all the uh, parameters um, that, we, that we want. 
and in the end here we have an HTML representation of this observation data. Um, and this is again same information content as you have when you use the uh, standard compliant SOS. But here in an HTML um, uh, representation and we can also query a JSON representation of this. Um, so for example contained is here the phenomenon time, so the, the timestamp of that uh, data, the procedure that measured the data and um, the actual value here 23. Okay. Yeah, here again, um, overview of the supported uh, parameters to query um, sensor data. So we've seen most of them. Um, just to point out here, we also support a spatial filter um, to query yeah, only observations of a, uh, from a certain uh, geographic region. And we also support uh, yeah, a filter to, to get, for example, only values that are uh, yeah, greater than a particular threshold. Okay, as I said, um, we also wanted to um, have this SOS extension um, yeah, serve the functionality to be uh, fully compliant with the SOS 2.0 standard. And um, yeah, that is uh, shown here, this functionality, um, the, this uh, uh, yeah, way of asking the service for data is called in the OGC SOS 2.0 standard get observation operation and um, yeah, an example is given here. So we can uh, basically also use this uh, way of defining parameters and their values in um, an HTTP get uh, URL here and then um, receive that data. I can quickly show it to you how that looks like. Mm, we go back to the main starting point of the SOS, which is here, this um, capabilities kind of uh, page. And then down here we have the supported operations, for example, um, get observation. And we have again such a form to query, uh, to, to, to give the, uh, the parameter values. These are mandatory, uh, so required by the SOS 2.0 standard service and version request as well, that is get observation in this case. And um, can define here CO sensor network as the uh, sensor we want to ask for data. And I think we have defined here um, yeah, a, a spatial filter that I quickly copy. So we want only um, observations uh, from this particular uh, geographic region on this bounding box. So we ask for this and we, what we get back is um, yeah, true owned M2.0 encoded data and um, put into such a SOAP envelope up here. So this is basically the, the SOS 2.0 standard conform way of, uh, of asking for the data. Okay, um, yeah, to sum up some uh, final conclusions, well, what did we do here? We extended the functionality of the GeoServices REST API um, by yeah, defining a model for near real-time sensor data and extending the API to uh, access data uh, within that model, so to say. Um, we can access observations, features, and sensor descriptions. Um, we can do explicit temporal filtering. Um, that is a uh, yeah, functionality add-on to the uh, usual GeoServices REST API. And what I haven't shown you here actually is um, we also support server-side time zone conversion of the data. Um, and then we, yeah, we provide this functionality as an extension to the OGC Geoservices REST API um, and uh, have aligned this uh, functionality with the already existing standards ONM 2.0, SOS, SensorML, and um, the so-called SWE lightweight profile. Okay, um, 
yeah, in future, uh, we uh, want to further extend this uh, extension by also allowing the upload or insertion of uh, sensor data. Um, then uh, we, uh, as another step, we want to support the currently ongoing uh, standardization of the GeoServices REST API. It's currently going through the OGC standardization process by also defining this SOS extension to the GeoServices REST API as a formal specification and hand this into the OGC standardization process. And last but not least, we have to further work on the implementation of our extension to yeah, uh, complete this um, SOS 2.0 standard support. Okay, that's about it. Uh, finally, here um, a link uh, to the uh, website of this project. Uh, you're welcome to, to visit that and get further information. Thanks. <clears throat> well, thank you for a nice presentation. Is, is there any question? Yeah, please. Yeah, you. Okay. Yeah. The one was the first one was the let's call it a traditional uh, uh, sensor observation service project you uh, were developing since a couple of years and this is uh, what you introduced now is the second one yeah. uh, and this will also be available as open source or exactly, is this a yeah. proprietary project no it's also open source it's a different uh, project so different uh, code base basically. And um, yeah, it's also available, freely available as open source on our website. And you will maintain t um, the, let's say, uh, the two sensor observation uh, service projects uh, in parallel. Yes. And uh, last question from my side was? Uh, Short is nicer. Hmm? Short question is much better. Okay. Um, can you spend some thoughts about the uh, client side? Client side. Um, well, uh, I'm not sure if you know this uh, browser-based client for the SOS, which we have to ask for uh, time series, so you can uh, access uh, different kinds of SOS services and uh, yeah, basically display the, the time series of, of measured data. And that uh, uses the uh, standard conform SOS uh, interface, so you can basically access services. That's a short question. Um, well, I think it should be enough. Okay. <laughs> and you can go after the break because last questions. Yes, sir. Yes, go ahead. Please, microphone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I noticed that, um, well, firstly, does it mean that the model that you originally had uh, is replicated that that's a data warehousing model so you, repl you you get the original data from the providers and, and store it in a geodatabase and then make it available to the uh, um, yeah. uh, and if that's the case um, have you considered alternatives to that and if so what was the justification for for the maintaining the data warehouse model well um as an environmental organization, you can uh, choose different approaches to use this uh, SOS extension for ArcGIS server. On the one hand, you can um, yeah, set up a new database and uh, which complies fully to, to the model which we have developed, and then it would be easy for you to uh, use this uh, right out of the box by just like uh, transferring existing data into that uh, new database so you would have kind of redundancy. However, it's also possible um, uh, for us to uh, adjust this um, SOS extension here to existing databases so, uh, or data schemas. And then you, you wouldn't have the redundancy but set up this uh, SOS um, on top of existing uh, data sets. Does that answer your question? Or? Mostly. <laughs>